Welcome to An Architecture, Episode 17. Joe and I recently had the opportunity to be interviewed on the Declare Your Independence show with Ernest Hancock. Declare Your Independence is a daily three-hour radio show on the LRN radio network, which you can find at lrn.fm. Ernie is a guy who knows everybody in the libertarian movement. It seems like he's, he's been everywhere and done everything. <laughs> he goes to all the events. And if you listen to his show regularly, you know that he has some pretty high-powered guests on there. And his show is really kind of a clearinghouse for everything that's happening within the libertarian movement. Ernie manages a website called Freedoms Phoenix, which has a ton of links to news articles and opinion that are of interest to libertarians and that you probably won't find many other places. We got hooked up with Ernie through a friend of his, Jay Noon, who I met at New Hampshire's Liberty Forum, which is a free state project event that I sponsored in February with my architecture firm, Audra Architecture. Jay passed her name along to Ernie. We had a really fun conversation with Ernie. Now, the interview was at 9 in the morning, for me anyways, but for Joe in Australia, it was 12.30 a.m. <laughs> so because he didn't want to wake up his wife and kids with a recording, he took his computer and his microphone and his whole recording rig out to his car and ran an extension cord out there and was doing the interview sitting in his car in the dark in his driveway. You'll hear as we get started that Joe stumbled a little bit on the first question. I think the, the late hour was, was getting to him. But once we warmed up a bit, it uh, went pretty smoothly, and we got into some, some good topics with Ernie. As you'll hear, Ernie has taken our fetish for flying cars to a whole new level. He's talking about building a flying pirate airship. All that and more on Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock. And now, live from the studios of Freedom's Phoenix, Ernest Hancock. Believe me when I say we have a difficult time ahead of us. But if we are to be prepared for it, we must first shed our fear of it. I stand here without fear because I remember. I remember that I am here not because of the path that lies before me, but because of the path that lies behind me. I remember that for 100 years we have fought these machines. And after a century of war, I remember that which matters most. We are still here! Today, let us make them remember. We are not afraid! No fear, no fear, no fear, no fear, no fear here and declare your independence from me, Ernest Hancock, here in Phoenix, Arizona, eh? from the BEA beautiful studios of Freedoms with an S, S, FreedomsPhoenix.com. <coughs> I almost made it. All right. We have today Tim and Joe Brochu. Now, I'm going to have them explain, uh, you know, get the pronunciation right. I want to make sure I get it right. It's an architecture podcast out of... Australia. Here's another find by Jay Noon. And as Jay says, uh, we need to talk to him. We need to talk to him because that's just the way it is. He knows what we're looking for. Tim and Joe, let's say hello. Hello, Tim and Joe. Hey, Ernie. How you doing? <laughs> hey, Ernie. Okay. Now, one of you, we got, um, you know, kind of camping out in the car, hiding, uh, not wanting <laughs> to wake up the kids. Okay. So, we'll yeah, go ahead. Right. so you're in a different place than your brother. Where are you guys at? Yeah, so this is Joe. I'm in Australia, Adelaide, South Australia. Uh, yeah, and I figured I've um, I've been relegated out to the car. You know, I had my dreams of building a professional studio in the back of the house, but wife and kids wanted a pool instead, so that, that's what we ended up doing. So yeah, you, <laughs> you know, can see why I'm not a huge fan of democracy. That, that's a that's a you know how it happens, man. Welcome to married life. Okay, so <laughs> right. this and the uh, so both I, I missed one's in Australia. Where's the yeah, other? Man, one? This is. This is Tim. I'm in uh, I'm in Maine, uh, just over the border from the free state of New Hampshire, uh, which actually is where we grew up. We both grew up in New Hampshire, so uh, it's I've been recently getting involved with some of the free state activities, which is how I how I met Jay at, at Liberty Forum. Um, so it's it's been exciting to to be here and to see our home state um, becoming this home for liberty now. Well, how did that uh, transmit to Australia? And you guys, because you're brothers, I guess you're hanging and. Uh you got a show from, um, you know, Canada. So you're in Canada, right? 
No, no, in Maine. Sorry. Okay, That's so close, you're Maine. Pretty close to Canada. All right, yeah, so it's you're in Maine. <laughs> well, you Canada said across South. the border. I wasn't sure which border. All right, so <laughs> uh, all right, you're in Maine. Then you have your brothers in Australia, and you guys do a podcast together. We do, yeah. It's, it's kind of been a, a, a labor of love for us, but it's just a a nice way for us to keep to keep in touch while Joe is so far away, and for us to both um, really explore these ideas of liberty that that we've both been interested in for a while. Um, and I'm an architect, so it, and Joe is actually an engineer and has a, a background um, oh my God. working on on construction construction projects and and some other um ventures like that okay. and so it seemed Art. like a logical thing was to to do a podcast talking about what we call the built environment which is talking about cities and buildings and roads and infrastructure and talking about libertarian issues related to how all that gets done wow so i, I you guys favor each other quite a bit are you guys twins we are we're actually identical twins okay identical twins i can see why you know, a little thing like half the world not getting in the way. Okay, so you guys <laughs> doing a podcast. Now, did you guys go to college together? You know, one kind of went engineering, one went architecture, or did you guys go to two different separate places? Yeah, we went to two separate schools. Um, I went up to University of Rochester in upstate New York, and Tim went to Carnegie Mellon. Um, yeah, and then that was really probably the first time we've really been apart from each other, <laughs> you know, having grown up together. Um but, uh, you know, we've managed to stay close throughout it all. Yeah, okay. Now, this is, I'm, I want to have uh, whichever one of you can do it. It doesn't matter. We look at one of you where we can see the other ones in the dark, but you look like the other one, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> we're basically okay. the same person. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, I guess, we're, I guess we're not missing out, you know, what you look like. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I wanted to have you uh, in the next uh, four minutes we got left, the an architecture podcast by listening to that. And I'm sure you've done more than a couple of shows. So, um, by listening to that, what are we getting from an architect and engineer that is, uh, uh, more anarchist leaning? What are you looking for? What are you sharing? What interests you? The, I mean, the big picture is that we want to find ways to, um, to talk about developing the built environment in a way that isn't dependent on government. Right now, the way that things get built um, is very much dependent on government. I mean, obviously, you have government roads, government property, all the any kind of public space is often just default to to the government and government ownership. And so we're trying to define ways of, um, for one thing, developing places, building cities without relying on governments to to own, let's say, the roads and public parks, um, finding ways for for cities to be developed without relying on that, as well as f figuring out ways to take existing cities and turn those over to private hands um, and divest things like roads and, and parks and all this public property and infrastructure um, and find ways to do that where the government becomes unnecessary. But who will build the compliance? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, of course, that's another part of it is when you, you get into things like planning and zoning, um, you know, there are some legitimate motivations for some of those things uh, to, to minimize and avoid a property rights conflicts, essentially. Things like noise and, and you know, other nuisances from one site to another. Um, but the way it's done now um, is really anything but that. It creates a lot more conflict than it resolves. Yeah, I know my thing is, uh, you know, leave me aloneism. You know, I, I, excuse me a second. Oh, triple sneeze. Now you guys missed it. Okay. That's good luck. This, this is the one thing that I wanted to, you know, kind of get out of you guys. I, you know, during the break, we'll talk about some stuff, but I, I, I'm, I'm looking at if your default is not to have government, then, and some people's are to have government. How do you make the argument to the ones that we got to have that they don't need? And what is how architecture is going to do that? You're, you're thinking zoning or you're thinking common space, law enforcement, not having law to enforce, culture. I, you got you to round this out a little bit. And you're thinking that structure, the actual you know, me mechanics of a city, has something to do with that. Give me an example. Like what? Um, go ahead, Jeff. 
<laughs> yeah, sorry, no, it is 12.30, so my brain's not working in full gear at the moment. Um, so, <laughs> well, uh, one example, in. yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I mean, so one, one way we can think about this is um, something like a homeowner's association. So if somebody wants to live in a place where there's, you know, clear definitions of, of how things are getting maintained and, and who's paying for what and everything. Um, you have nowadays you have condominium developments or even, you know, bigger kind of commercial developments um, where they are privately developed and you have this infrastructure and stuff that's that's commonly owned to some extent. Um, and then you could have homeowners associations that are that have their own rules that define. Okay, no, that's that not what sorted. I mean. All right, you're, you're talking okay. structure on paper. I'm I, I'm getting the impression that the architecture itself, you know, how the roads are done. Does it do, go in a circle? Is it 3D? Is it underground? Is there some uh, common aqueduct, water, lake kind of some structure that of uh, the way it physically is built? You know, is it a beehive looking thing on the the horizon where everybody flies in and drones up and hangs like, you know, vampire bats or something. I mean, I, you know, there's a structure to it. Freedom has a structure, and it's what? It's, I don't know, chaos out there on the Lone Prairie? Is everybody in their jetpacks kind of flighting around and floating around? Is it, uh, uh, you know, swamp people? Boats! Boats, seasteading! You know, spaceships, <laughs> space stations. Is flying it cars. It's flying cars. Flying cars. See, I, you know, what's the structure? Yeah, you know, we're going to find out. The answer out. is all, all of the above. Ah, see? <laughs> yeah, you had to spoil the ending. We'll be right back. <laughs> Pirateswithoutborders.com, huh? 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 Okay. Yeah. This is one thing I, I'm excited and we want to get into. I want to tell you about off air. We got a few minutes mm -hmm. here. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, if you're at a computer, one of you guys, uh, yeah, which one is uh, where I can see him in the room with the white in the background? Uh, this is Tim. Uh, I'm Tim. The architect in All right, Maine, Tim. Yeah. Joe's in the bunker. All right. So what we're going to do is you go to pirateswithoutborders.com. Yeah, pirateswithoutborders.com. The whole thing is the promotion of the decentralization of everything. And you have different categories on the right, you know, communication, energy, shelter, health, mm -hmm. education, transportation, on and on and on. So the way we do on freedomsphoenix.com, we have categories. Now, the high-tech ones that empower the individual to be more self-sustaining or whatever, we put over in pirates. Now, the big thing is, is architecture, because how do you construct the um, way to be the man leave you alone? Well, eventually it mm -hmm. came down to you got to have a pirate ship, okay? So we designed <laughs> a pirate airship, spaceship. I go anywhere... Freedom is only 62 miles straight up, 100 kilometers. No s sovereign entity tells me what to, I'm a pirate and suck it, okay? So right. <laughs> anarchy is only 62 miles away. And Seasteading needs their shipping done by somebody. So this <laughs> is an enormous ship that's a building that flies. It's over 1,000 feet long. It's 100 feet longer than the Hindenburg. And this thing, we on the forums, we've been designing it. And I got, you know, construction uh, supervisors and engineers. Um, uh, we don't have architects. Now we have some architects <laughs> kind of, but we have CAD designers of the ship. And they, if you go into the forums and the big idea, you'll see how far we've gotten on the ship. So it's okay. air displacement and how much it can lift what, and the pirate code. This is the pirate code to, to live on the ship. It's captain Mark's freaking ship. Then you have the first and second letter of captain Mark, all the stuff that you're talking about. When you have two twins, you know, that are uh, architects and I thought you said a structural engineer, right? Uh, not structural. Uh, I studied mechanical and mechanical these days engineer. Sort of mechanical, electrical controls. That yeah, sort of no, stuff, so. in Maine up there, yeah. Derek Slopey, he's doing the command and control fiber optic because I don't want to get Wi-Fi hack, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. I'm yeah. telling you, man, we've been going on this thing for a while and we're doing, you know, presentations and all our print. Oh, yeah. And it's uh, we're not off the grid. We're above the grid, you know. Yeah. I, so I, I'm telling <laughs> yeah. you guys to dig it. I just want to make sure you got that intro to that. And then now we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, your show and stuff in 10 seconds. Here right. we go. Roads, it's the Ernest Tancock Show. Where we're going, there aren't any roads. Rowan, 
Where we're going, we don't need no stinking row ads. You know, I, I'm just, I, ah, oh, and, and even think that way. We got these young guys. Oh, yeah, that's one thing we didn't ask. All right, twins, how old are you guys? <laughs> we are 39. 39, <laughs> not yep, even yep. 40. Youngins, you know, that's one thing. Nope. I'm 39 50, forever from now on. I'm 56, and I remember until, it wasn't until I was 40-something they started quit calling me young man, okay? So I'm going, you know, young man, I, I get to do it. No, 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 no. Okay. So 39, you have, uh, both of you have families? Yep. Okay. So yeah. now, you know, when you have children, it's kind of puts you in a different mindset. You know, how, how's this, anarch- you know, I'm just wondering how anarchist children rebel. You know what I mean? <laughs> Probably the same way. By following the, the rules. <laughs> <laughs> By following the rule, that's awesome. Okay, so now we're looking at uh, the podcast, and I'm wondering who are you talking to, and what are you trying to share, and what kind of impact you think you've had because you're in two parts of the whole world. You know, I'm sure your family and friends kind of you know know you do this thing, and they probably checked it out, and then maybe they might have told a couple of friends, and all of a sudden you got a listenership. Tell me how that's going. Yeah, it's going all right. So we um, we first launched with a few episodes that we had sort of pre-recorded, um, and then we actually we we got our web hosting through Tom Woods's uh, promo links, which means that he gives you a bit of a uh, a shout out on his show. Um, and during that process, we actually contacted him and and managed to get ourselves booked onto his show as a guest. So um, so that gave us uh, you know the Woods bump. And it gave us a pretty good launching pad to get a, get a lot of at least the libertarian side of things uh, starting to listen to us. Um, but we also we try to we want to be sort of a bridge between both the libertarian sort of you know anarcho capitalist community as well as the people who are interested in architecture, urbanism, uh, the built environment, and that sort of stuff. And I think that there's the built environment stuff. Um, I think people are pretty open-minded there. I think they're they're very pragmatic and they, they want to see some real solutions happening. And uh, we have been sort of finding some other people uh, in that same sort of milieu who are um, who are thinking along the same lines. You know, who, who have you know read read a bit of Mises and Hayek, and um, and understand you know the importance of allowing markets to function and not having everything be kind of a top-down command and control. Um, so so I think. I think this this movement is actually having a bit of an impact on the industry, where you're starting to see a lot of kind of the real influential thinkers um, in the sort of urbanism movement who are are starting to take on you know these these ideas of of letting markets drive things, drive development, and you know a lot of them are still you know status looking for top down solutions or at least looking for someone to sort of be a referee or something like that. You know, well, I'm looking um, for you know in your discipline. There is a physical structure to freedom, or is there? You know, I'm just wondering how it, it doesn't seem like it's um, a big giant mountain of shipping containers that have hallways and are next to the light rail system with their, you know, hose of everything a body needs gruel. You know what I mean? I just, there, there's some structure. It's like farms or it's uh, self sustaining units of something you know i'm just wondering yeah. you know i give you an example when they do the seasteading thing it started in the mid 90s I remember there was a thing called oceania it was a floating city uh 50 miles off the coast of panama and they thought it'd be like deep space nine you know you got all this traffic and shipping <laughs> to come in and go to your opium den brothel you know howitzer shooting target practice platform or something i mean you know so they they have that but it, it, and they had the structure, you know, we could be out here in the ocean, but then it's kind of like, you know, is there murder being punished? Is it so-and-so versus the state? I mean, what's the state thing? You know, then it kind of came into a homeowner association that the constitution was like an inch thick, you know, and the laws were like a you know, quarter inch thick, you know, so there's all the thou shalt nots or something. So going through that was interesting. Then seasteading came. Well, we understood immediately you know, from our perspective, you have to have your own autonomous, I own it, acre, island of I hook up, you know, standard docking, whatever the heck, because my neighbors suck and I undock and I go around over here. I start my own, you know, uh, platform, honeycomb, kiss my butt. So it, it it's kind of, if you have a collective, there's always going to be these problems. If you have the detachment and Seasteading started designing these, you know, individual units that would link together, 
Now you got something. So I'm going, okay, you know, freedom, anarchy, leave me aloneism has a structure. It's your own nuclear powered Nautilus. You know, it's your own flying airship, spaceship, ship, ship or something, leave me aloneism. I'm over here and I got my own pirate code. So that's what I'm asking about architecture. And you being here, we got a lot of desert. Australia, you got a lot of desert. Maine, you got a lot of woods. You know, somebody goes plops down somewhere. How would you, can you have a libertarian commune? Is that even possible? Yeah, they're kind of called families, but I mean, you know, you see what I mean? I'm looking for yeah. structure. I mean, I think that, that there is, there are some extremes of that. You know, you can have the, the really, truly individualistic, um, approach where you have, as you said, these, um, separate individual plots of land, that's plots of land or whether it's your, your, your vehicle that can move around. Uh, where each person is is somewhat detached from people around them, but on the other end of the spectrum, you can have um, you can have more collective arrangements, um, like we talked about, kind of homeowners associations. But as long as those things are voluntary, and as long as people are are free to leave and come and go into those things at will, and also have some some control over over changing them. And the, the reason I mention that is that one thing I, I want to be careful of is. Not just saying that that everybody should live autonomously on their own and be totally self-sufficient, because what we see is that when people come together um, in cities, um, you get some really strong network effects that start to happen there, where you get these these jumps in productivity and the division of labor um, and innovation and, and wealth creation. That happens when people come together. Tom have to, um, and so that so you know. I think that the point there is that this all just has to be voluntary and um, you want to, to give people, even within some more collective arrangement, um, let people have um, have as, as many rights as possible, you know, so that the collective... Yeah, you know, all that gets you high productivity, gets you a lot of diversity, gets you a lot of stuff, and then there's always some man goes, wow, man, you guys are prosperous as heck. I'm going to put my spigot up to your river here, you know, and the yeah. spigot keeps getting bigger, and then thanks for being so prosperous and I appreciate it. And it's mine now, you know, so I'm, <laughs> there's always that, you know, it's like, you know, I remember years ago, Molino going on about how happy a free range chicken is and productive and they're doing great and wonderful, but they always wind up being chicken, uh, at McNuggets, you know? So <laughs> I, 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 I'm looking at this kind of mindset. I, I, I'm with you, brother. You know, it's just a, over the years I see when you have a prosperous thing like that, that's the very town that gets under siege by the man with their ion cannon in space. I mean, you know, it's, it, it, look, some goodies. They're ours now. <laughs> How do you stop it? You stop the predation. Well, you know, we're going to, we're going to talk about it and find out because we're looking for a solution as is a lot of people, which is why I'm sure they were brought to our attention. A couple of brothers for freedom around the world. One last thing I got to do. We'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, it's going well. What is the, <laughs> some of the things that you want to make sure gets out? You're going to need to make sure you get your website out and the site and what you're doing and a goal and the special project of the children or something. So go ahead and think of you know, the top one, two, three, whatever it is you want to get out and get in the show archive, okay? Okay. All right. So when we come back, we'll do yeah, that. We had a little outline kind of here that we're kind of working off of a bit, so we can we can jump around a bit here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can do whatever you want. I just want to make sure you get your websites out and people, you know, I want to say yeah. get your pen and paper and write this down kind of thing. And then we have this information in the archive on the uh, website. So yep. you have hour one, whatever there. And uh, <clears throat> and see, who do we have next? Bum, bum, bum. Kamado platform for end to end blockchain solutions. You guys know anything about that? <laughs> I'm like the last guy in the world like to get on on board of the blockchain stuff and <laughs> I don't know. No, I feel, when I you know, I, I met Jay Newen and of course he gives me his business card and we, we got talking about snow plowing because he's a plow guy, right? Mm -hmm. And then he gives me his business card and it's like plow guy and cryptocurrency consultant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like the last man on earth. Who oh, like only a, in a the space, man. <laughs> only in the space. You get that. And people, only in New Hampshire, yeah. And, yeah, and people go, good. <laughs> That's, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> so I, I imagine I can pay you in crypto, right? Uh, yes, you can. <laughs> That's a, you know, that, that's awesome to see. 
Yeah, Jay is, um, I mean, you cannot have enough appreciation for Jay until you get to know him and all the skills he has. And yeah, yeah, it seems like he's a man of many talents. Oh, no, no, the, it's a zombie apocalypse. You know, he's up there <laughs> with a scepter and stuff, man. You know? <laughs> Please, can I be in your fiefdom? Save me. You know, he's got power. Um, what I'll, uh, after we get, you know, the websites and all that kind of stuff, um, I wanted to see if you guys have your own groups and where you're at and like hacker spaces or meetups or you actually start to employ any of this stuff. There's a, cause I'm interested. We have a thing called the Arizona breakfast club and it's been going on 40 something years. And uh, I'm going to start kind of backing off from, it. I've been doing it for 10, 15 years and let the next generation guys take it. And, uh, but I want to do a pirate thing. Anarchy, man, all Arizona pirates. Okay. <laughs> so the, uh, I want to make sure that I, while I got you guys on, how you've evolved or developed these concepts into like, uh, you know, family, friends, do you meet, do you bring this in? Is this an ad, you know, where you're at or a bother? I mean, so we can talk a little bit about that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. Yeah. So we come back, have the uh, websites and so on, and then the outreach component of it. We'll be back in just a minute. This is the Liberty radio network broadcasting the latest Liberty oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. It's time for Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock. To be a part of the show, call 602-264-2800. Tim and Joe brought you referral from Jay New, which means you know they co- they co- they're co-hosts, they're twin brothers, and they're co-hosts, I should have read this, and it told me, twin brothers, and they're co-hosts of an architecture podcast, a podcast and blog exploring peaceful, non-governmental approaches to the development of the built environment, okay, exploring peaceful, non-governmental approaches to the development of the built environment. So I guess they're talking cities. From the personal scale of your home to the community scale of a city to the global scale of a diversity of regions. And architecture identifies the impacts of historical and contemporary governmental aggressions on the constructed form of the physical world around us. And architecture explores alternative, non-aggressive approaches for resolving conflict and promoting voluntary cooperation in the development of the built environment. Okay. Tim's a licensed architect and principal and manager of Adra Architecture LLC, offering a broad range of architectural services to residential, commercial, and healthcare clients in the New Hampshire, Maine, and Massachusetts area. Joe is an engineer based in Adelaide, South Australia, with God, there's a South Australia too. Damn, you South <laughs> with multidisciplinary experience. Right down the bottom including mechanical, electrical, automation, audiovisual, IT, process improvement, and project management. He is currently a sales engineer and estimator focused on small to medium-sized power generation projects in the Australian region, enticing all the crypto miners in the world to go to Australia. Okay, so this is, um, you know, two ends of the globe here. And, you know, Maine has a latitude of pretty north, and you're in South Australia, you know, how far off are you guys on uh, latitude? We're actually, like, on the opposite ends of the Earth from each other. Like, if you hold a globe between your fingers, you could spin it. <laughs> you know? No, I know, I but know I'm, I'm saying it. how close. Like, he's at the, you know, 25th degree, oh, okay. whatever, yeah, and you're at the yeah. same on the south. A little warmer. Yeah, a little warmer where Joe up. is. I'm probably a little closer to the equator, yeah, but uh, not, not too much. <laughs> okay, so, okay, who is? Joe, Joe. <laughs> okay, Joe, Joe is to, closer. To the, so you're Joe not as Australia. far. Okay, close. To, all right. That's yeah. why I was kind of getting at the you know, South Australia. Yeah. You kind of like Maine. You know, it's like uh, Northern California to New Zealand. You know that kind of deal. All right. Yeah, so you probably, guys, yeah. you guys visiting each other in alternate holidays of somebody's not too hot or cold. Yeah, we do. So I, I, uh, I was just up in um, in New Hampshire, well Maine, with Tim uh, last November. Uh, we actually had a friend who got married in Boston, so I came out for that. And we had, we managed to record a podcast episode while we were there, so we, we managed to uh, get some productivity out of it. And then uh, we've got another trip planned for next October for our 40th birthday. 
Oh. So, uh, so, so Tim, have you been to sure. Australia? I have, yeah. Well, when Joe got married, um, they were living in the States at the time, but they, they got married in Australia, which is where his, his wife is from. Um, so we used that as an excuse to to fly out there and spend a couple weeks traveling around a Okay, bit. so how did this happen? Did you meet her in college or something, or just a really long <laughs> pen pal? No, uh, we were actually working together. Uh, the company we were working for uh, had an office in New Hampshire as well as one in Melbourne, Australia. So, um, yeah, so we just kind of met. I'll travel work. to the other side of the world for you, baby. <laughs> all right, all right, I, I get the drill. All right, so this is you know this is how it spreads, man. You know, we're just spread out. So tell me about Australia. This this anarchist podcast. Okay, first, 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 first. Give out all the web pages and how people can find you and what search terms that they're looking for to get Tim and Joe. Go. Yep, sure. So if you so our main homepage is anarchitecturepodcast dot com. Um, and if you can't remember that, just think of an architecture podcast and you know, same spelling. So that'll get you there. An architecture um, podcast. Oh, you pay extra for that. Okay. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. All right. And yeah. um, podcast.com. podcast.com. Got it. Yeah. And then, uh, the, the other spot where we're fairly active is on Twitter. Uh, our handle there is, is at an architecture P. Um, you know, when, when you've got a long name, like an architecture that you don't, you kind of run out of characters pretty quickly on Twitter. So, <laughs> Um, but that's, those are the two main spots. And then we're on all the various kind of podcast feed captures and, um, you know, iTunes and, and all that. You know, people um, tell me about that. I took a couple of weeks off and then I started getting the, Hey man, you're my, is it my podcast channel? Blah, blah, blah. Or did you stop or kind of, you know, I go, Hey, I was just on vacation and had some reruns, but <laughs> you know, the, um, all these different ones, I don't know how they work. Are they, are they just pulling it? from my feed or something they find it and they just do it or do you subscribe to them or what there, there's a few that you that you kind of set up manually like itunes and there's a google one and some others that you kind of have to basically register your your feed with them but then there's there's others it's basically just an rss feed and so there's other services that just go around and pick up all these you know, podcast rss feeds um yeah i didn't the know they were doing that until i stopped doing it <laughs> And then, boom, hey, <laughs> what happened? I'm going, who are you? You know, I didn't, okay, so, all right, well, that's cool. I mean, this is what's happened. Oh, you'll dig this. One of the other guys from there uh, that Jay had us talk to yesterday, God, I can't remember his name, um, he uh, has a local feed of any video that you're putting up, and it goes out and the curating is done by the people, and it creates all these video channels for like Phoenix or Sydney or Portland or something like that of all YouTubers kind of uh, your own local channels for local news and sports and stuff that's done from people that feed and automatically does that by area. And as it gets really popular, it may go national kind of thing. So this yeah. is that that ba bad mirror TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bad mirror. I, that's what yeah. it was. Yeah, what'd you I had, think I had of a that booth next to them at, at Liberty forum? They were right next to me. Yeah. What'd you think? <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. It's it's cool. It's like a um, yeah. It's just, it's a local resource for for video hosting. So oh, so you gotta tell me about like a lot of, a lot of lo local bands and stuff. You right, know, it seems like a good outlet. Exactly. Yeah. You gotta tell me about Australia. You you're local there now, so come on, man. You know, share. Yeah. I, I, what's the impact? Are they they starting to you know torch out in front and you know get the monster or something? You know, in the evenings or what? <laughs> well, I've, I've managed to keep a pretty low profile so far, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I look around at you know, you know the outlook for kind of liberty here. I don't see – there doesn't seem to be a visible liberty movement here the way there is in the U.S. Um, but on the other hand, if you look out, you know, Western Australia, it's basically an entire state full of gold miners. So I, I, there's got to be a few, you know, libertarians in that group out there. So They um, already are. I just don't know it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Look, a revenue well, hey, Boom! <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we we have had contact from a few people you know that have heard our podcast, um, you know that, that have shown some interest. But um, yeah, look, at, I don't really have the time I would like to to do any sort of real kind of outreach and activism. Um, you know, what I should be doing is, is a bit more research just to see who's already out there doing stuff and and try to hook up with them. Um, but yeah, look, look t to date, I've just been <laughs> it. it, it Pretty much takes all my time just to do the you know editing on the podcast episodes. And I all know, that stuff, but so. I'm telling you, you know, it's kind of like on. you put all this stuff out together. It's one little, you know, an architecture podcast uh, MP3 uh, dime, you know, DVD flash drive of everything. 
and you go and yeah. it's just a file they download and you you going around and you have QR codes on all the the bushes out in the bush you know you got you know the, the stuff <laughs> you're passing out when they're all going in during the season here it comes all the miners and just giving out cards with QR codes and you know what and they just download and they download and they download and they listen to you because they got nothing else to listen to out there and you gave them something to listen to and they come out screaming anarchist because you gave them a DVD maybe <laughs> could be yeah, they don't I'll laugh man they can start sharing you know <laughs> i it, it's spreading it's a virus you just do your own that's one thing freedom's phoenix is kind of like you know uh the rebirth of freedom the phoenix from the ashes of lady liberty's torch that's kind of what the concept was you know back when we did that in 96 and when you're you know that mindset that that thing i'm going it, it starts from everywhere including australia out back in the southern nothing you know we got a pimp Hip them all over the world. And uh, twins makes it easier because you like spread yourself halfway around. It's a takeover. I can feel it coming. They got it planned. And you heard it here first. We'll be right back with Tim and Joe Brochu from anarchitecturepodcast.com. Our pirates. Pirates. <laughs> Gotta get you guys hooked up, man. You know, the, I'm looking at I'm looking at the uh, the the dimensions here on your on the powers of that borders of the uh, of the ship. <laughs> Did you go on to the forum? Yeah, I found some stuff on the forum here. Yeah, you yeah, go into cool the stuff. big idea, the introduction, then you start doing the cargo design, and then we got to clean up. I don't know whatever spams in there, but you know you have uh, <laughs> the um, uh, design of the ship. Oh, you want to know about that? You go to precariat. dot us. dot T.O., I think. You okay. Know? Uh, yeah. Now, the precariat, there's a, one of the guys I was talking to a year ago when we first started this, I was talking to Larkin Rose about his uh, mirror blender project that he was doing the animation. I'm going, man, I man, I just need the displacement of this ship so I can start doing the math on the weight of the structure and lifting capacity and all that kind of crap. And uh, so a guy was listening. For five months, he worked on it. And we were just kind of building out the floor. We weren't even paying attention. We go over, boom. You know, he already made all this progress. We go, you know what? Um, <laughs> we're going to do a fundraiser. Release the ship, you know. <laughs> Give us the files. <laughs> so, you know, it's um, – then we have a uh, – see, like, you guys are architects. So that's cool, you know, and uh, structural. So we got um, an architect – well, not an architect. It's a – what do you call them? Um, a construction manager, supervisor that, you know, like built the uh, uh, actual construction uh -huh. manager she did for like libraries and stuff like that. So she can kind yeah. of start coordinating it. We're getting her up to speed. We have an electrical engineer, con command and control. We're probably going to go fiber optic so we don't get hacked. And uh, uh, Derek is working on that. And then the actual where the airbags go and the displacement and the rocket engine. Oh, yeah. It goes to space, <laughs> man. Just floats up, you get high enough, turbines of speed, and you're just done. And Merlin engines from SpaceX, after 10 reuses, they go to the secondary market. Can I have some? Okay, so this is, oh, oh, carbon fiber, you know, everything, carbon nanotube structure, graphene coating of yada yada. The thing's going to weigh the weight of my cell phone, you know, and, <laughs> you know, and have, uh, you know, warp engines and whatever. You know, so we're just having fun with this. If you look at the yeah, magazine, look at the re the renderings look great on here. That's amazing. Someone really put some time into. Yeah, this. we're just starting. <laughs> we need architect yeah. and structure guys. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. I you know, have some fun because you're going. This is what I'm talking about: architecture that frees you. And um, and I'm over. I undocked, so suck it. I'm over here <laughs> with my flying car hangar landing deck. You know. Oh, and Sergey Brin. Right after, oh, I got to tell you on air. All right, here we go. Freedom is the answer. What's the question? I want to break free. You're listening to Ernest Hancock. I want to break free. Far I want to break free from your lies. I'm covering the secrets and exposing the law. Here and declare your independence. Oh, and who's helping me? Tim and Joe uh, brought you. Yo, bro, you. Hey, you gotta help me out here. How do you say that? Bro, you brought you. How do you do that? Yeah, bro, you. Yeah, it rounds a snowshoe. 
Brochu. Tim and Joe, my brochus, man. Right on. I go and I bet you had a lot of fun with that. Okay. Now, this is what I was, we were talking, uh, they were looking at Pirates Without Borders and the ship and all that kind of stuff and everything. And I tell you, you know, it's all about you can build your own ship. That's the whole point. Look, they go, well, on your mm-hmm. ship. Yeah, I go, yeah, it's my ship. It's Captain Mark's ship. He gets his own pirate code of his ship of HOA of kiss my butt and it's mine and, you know, and you're off or here's the deal and you don't like it, don't sign. You know, I totally agreed to my iTunes contract. I mean, you know, whatever it is. All right. So <laughs> this is, I totally agree. I totally agree. I've had my face sewed. All right. You know, so I totally agree. So this is hopefully get people thinking three dimensionally. And it's always a two-dimensional on the grid, down here, surveilled of the whatever. And I'm going, I just want people to start thinking up or out on the ocean or below the surface or in space or in the air, an envelope of, you know, suck it. Because right after I gave this presentation last year when we had the first ship designs done, two days later in April, Sergey Brin announced that he's building his own airship just like this. I mean, it's not like just like this. But so he can live on it and I can... You know, bring water to the needy children in Africa of whatever the heck, okay? It's an excuse so he can li- live on his own around the world. So he's building an airship. Larry Page, his partner at Google, has his own flying car company. And I think a lot of guys, when I give these presentations on what's already you can buy now and what's coming within the next year, I don't think they understand. Architecture for the city is going to be very different where they've already had their thousandth flight, four digits, 1,000 flights with the Dubai and Dubai with the Ehang 184 personal transport drone uh, flying car machine. Right now, over 1,000 flights already at Dubai going around the city. And I'm going, uh, that has to change architecture a little bit. What say y'all? Yeah, we actually did an episode recently uh, called The Future of Cities where we were just kind of um, just brainstorming about where where cities could go um, with some of these technological changes, and and one of the things we we tend to keep coming back to in our episodes is is flying cars. We are we're big fans and and are are anxiously awaiting for the arrival of flying cars. But yeah, it's really gonna if if they come in in a big way, it could really kind of turn cities on their head. Where you could have right now, you have this public sphere of cities, which is down at the ground level. And everybody's jockeying for a position there between cars and bikes and, and pedestrians and the commercial space. Um, whereas if you start to have things that are up in the air, maybe you start to, to make that public zone truly three-dimensional where you have um, the, the transportation is happening somewhere up higher. And then the street could possibly go back to being the, the kind of old-fashioned Walkway, pedestrian yeah. street um, that, that everybody loves in, in cities. Yeah, do you think cities would then, as you start to go three-dimensionally and building expense goes way down and the architecture can get, because of the strength of different uh, components, can be so different? And I'm going, all right, so you can do pretty much anything you want. What would they want? Would they want high? Would it be spread out? Would it be all green? Would it be bicycles and walking and electric moped, scooter, skateboards? I mean... You know, uh, hoverboards. Yeah, that's it. So what do we get? So what do we think we're going to be going to? What would we want if we could get anything we wanted? Well, I think you'd have, I mean, in a city, you've got so many different people who are there, each for their own reasons. And, uh, you know, one of the big advantages of cities is that you can kind of have all of that stuff, you know, within a relatively small area. So um, so the idea is that, you know, ideally with a, with a more libertarian approach to building cities, um, you wouldn't have everything kind of be, be planned out from the start. You'd have, you'd have much more organic development, which would follow kind of the market, the market supply and demand, um, of what people are actually, you know, choosing to spend their money on and, and choosing to, uh, to, to purchase in terms of where they want to live and, and the amenities that they want to have near them. You know, that's one thing that I, a concept Phoenix was a really perfect example of it. It started off when I moved here in the early seventies at 12, you know, from Florida that it was, you know, it was an up and coming city. It's always had really rapid growth, but you find out that at about a certain size, you know, two, three million or something, all of a sudden your your diversity starts to skyrocket. All of a sudden, you're not just getting Asian food; you're getting Thai food. You're getting, you know, the Thai food of the kind that's on the mountain on the backside of the bay of the whatever. I mean, you know, it's just it starts getting much more diverse, 
and you have access to many more things, and there's more, you know, uh, we'll call warehouses if I just went and got my, you know, super duper whatever shredder tree thing that would just happen to be down the street and took me 10 minutes and I went and got it. So it is amazing the exponential um, increase in choices and options as you have a density of human beings. But, you know, some of us just want to, you know, I like to have that over there on the horizon. I'll take my flying car to it, but I want to live out here in the leave me alone zone of suck it. All right. So I'm out here and I have transportation and communication to get access to those things, or I can go in for a meetup, you know, but uh, it's transportation. So the flying car is a social thing as much as a technological thing. It's going to change the mindset of people in so many different ways when 20 minutes away. We had, we were in Panama. We just came from Panama. This last weekend, a young couple, they came from South Africa, and he works at a, mine, a big copper mine there in Panama. It's only about, you know, 50 miles away and three or four hours, you know, for him to get through the mountain, whatever, to go home. So he only goes home on the weekends. I go, what if you had a 15, 20-minute commute with your air car right here and you commute from this nice place on the beach and without the bugs, you know? So I go, and it changes everything. So architecture, it's got to be changed. You're going to be build landing pads on dome homes and I got my own nuclear reactor kind of deal. How are you thinking about things like transportation and power or are you really looking – at more focused on the social structure in a city. Yeah, no, we're, we're definitely looking more broadly at, at transportation. And, you know, I, I think um, with everything you're talking about, um, I, I, that is one thing that we see, ha- we could see happening is that when you have, I mean, the automobile did this, when the automobile came, it really freed people up for where they could live. It wasn't just that everybody had to live in the city anymore to to get access to the amenities of of the city and the network and infrastructure there, um, you know, people started moving out into first with trains out into these kind of rail cities um, that were were suburbs to to a main city, and then of course there's the suburbanization which happened um, a little too much because of all the government uh, subsidization and road building and everything that has given us all the sprawl that we have now. Um, but when you start to reduce the travel time into cities, um, it really spreads out the the areas that that right. become part of that city or part of the metropolitan area, and that gives people a lot more choice of where they want to live and where they want to work and and who and how they are interacting with. So the tendency um, you the think is basis. people to be more spread out, and the better the freeway system or the structure of the whatever, they'll even endure LA traffic to not be stacked on each other. I, I don't know. As Joe said, it's it's individualized. I mean, some people want to live in the city to have access to the restaurants and the theaters and the museums and, and all that cultural stuff and, and the social networks, especially younger people, you know, especially if you're, let's say, in the dating pool. I mean, <laughs> a lot of younger people want to be in the city because that's where the people are, um, whereas other people um, want to have a little more a little more privacy and you know, a little more land, a little more space to themselves, especially if you're getting into some kind of agriculture or something. Um, and as you have improved transportation solutions, it allows those two worlds to to work together um, a lot better and give. Uh, well, are you giving that, credence to like uh, Elon boring tube of transport uh, underground? We can have bigger, freer cities from a beehive. Have we got ant tunnels? I mean, you know, is that is transportation to um, have bigger cities or to get to the cities, or it's just going to be demand of people's desires that are going to determine that and the fact that we can go 3d down or up is going to give rise to enormous cities that may be comfortable i you know so what's your preference do you think guys Uh, i don't know i think um yeah again like i think like i said before it's it's individualized and um you know having that transportation what it really is in economic terms is that it's reducing the transaction costs of you know getting to and from the city, um, and so whenever you do that, then you know it just it just opens up markets for for everything else to develop uh, much more efficiently. Get plan on developing because here she come. <laughs> it's going to be. I, I was wondering where's the flare crap. I need some coastal transportation. If I'm not having to do that freaking highway in Panama, the water. Where is that guy? And within a couple of years, I guarantee you they're going to be cruising up and down. Unless there's some (laughs) government agency saying they can't. 
is Michael. There we go. Thanks, guys. That was fun. <laughs> you know, thank you. Yeah. Hey, well, take a look at the the ship, man. As it develops, you guys might have something to say. I'm telling you, yeah, it's getting yeah. it. Just I tell you the one thing: if you go in the top right, it says "Build the ship" on the page. You know, and what goes in there are just a bunch of architectural things. You know, like different structures they have instead of on high rise. They were there uh, doing reinforced concrete pours for the floor and ceilings. Now they have the they're twenty percent lighter, and it's steel yeah. honeycomb like um, you know, uh, uh, you know, like cardboard, yeah, like steel mesh sort of thing. No, yeah. no, it's uh, it's um, tubes. It has uh, a yeah, plate like, and a plate with the tubes kind of in between to uh, give you the spaces. So mm-hmm. it's it's decking. You know, it's like Star mm-hmm. Trek. Yeah. You know, deck plate. And you just yeah. erector set a building out of steel, and it's lighter. And I'm yeah, going, yeah, cool. you know, damn. So anyway, so that's kind of stuff we put up, you know, uh, threaded nanotubes, you know, you, you get on spools of thread, you know, you get and you yeah. make and do and build and mesh and whatever. So very architectural, <laughs> structural kind of stuff, man. Go get inspired. Okay. No, no, well, no, no, I'm no, looking no, at stuff. this. I like how they included the zero G basketball court as one of the uh, program areas. Oh, did they show. really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even get time to, once it starts, I'm like, holy crap, what can I do to encourage this? You guys just go, <laughs> you know, which is what I'm doing here and right now. Hey, thanks for coming on. You guys got any, you know, cool stuff to talk about, news, need some help with something, uh, you know, let me know and we're all over it. Cool. Uh, I appreciate it. All right. Thanks for staying up, man. Talk to you later. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, Eddie. Cheers. Thanks. Um, Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, sorry. No, it is 12.30, so my brain's not working in full gear at the moment. Um, so, <laughs> uh, one example. Yeah, sorry. <laughs>